Pig. So why? Hebrew is a very dynamic language. The word pig, chazir, is rooted in the Hebrew word chazar, to return. And the word pig and the word return are is the same word. And there is a, a midrash that explains that in the Acharit Ayamim, based on Psalm 146, Midrash Ocher Tov, that explain that in the last day, in the Messianic age, the pig will become clean again. He will change. The Midrash explained that that a lot of things will turn in the physical when Mashiach come, okay? Wow. One of the things is the pig, and it's, he will return, okay? The word pig is meant to come back, to return. So uh, there is another Midrash explain also that, uh, that uh, he called pig because he will return atarale yoshna, which means he will return the crown at the day of old. He will return the crown to return the crown to Israel to the days of old, but the Midrash also teaches that he will return the crown, the crown will return to his head as the day of old. So he he's received a glory. Think about the story of Joseph in the Bible. As Joseph revealed himself as something completely different. In the last day, he was something else. That's a principle of the kosher pig, or the principle of, of, of uh, Yaakov, uh, uh, called Israel, who is really masquerading himself as his son. That's a co-picture of the, the kosher pig, you see it. Or the Messiah, the Messiah is called in uh, Sanhedrin 98, as an example, he's called the leper scholar. He's a concept of this kosher pig as the one who, who, ref who appears as something, but but it is something not. That's what the, 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 the rabbis explained to us. The, the, the uh, Mashiach uh, related to the Hebrew word Nachash, a serpent. Mm -hmm. Well, how can a serpent be a Mashiach? I mean, a serpent is something evil and wicked. And they explained that something that appears in the shell, in the klipa, on the outside is Tameh, is unclean. In the inside represents the highest level of Kedusha, of holiness, Mashiach. So the concept of the kosher pig is simply mean that Messiah today is a resemble something that is unkosher, uh, but in the last days, uh, it will be kosher. Even the sword, in the Torah, the sword, it says that the, the, the highest Malach of Hashem is called Chazir El, the pig of God, or the pig is God, who, who will return to Israel and somehow uh, uh, justify Israel. So the return of the kosher pig is the question, the question what makes Yeshua, quote unquote, Chazir? Why mm. is he on kosher? And how can we make him kosher again? Uh, so the book is a, a defense for the Mashiach, who is, for example, a pig that will be kosher again. So there's a real play on word here. Why do you think it's so popular in Orthodox communities? The book? Yeah. It's, it's, it's popular not just in Orthodox. It's a popular book because it's presenting a, a Mashiach in a context, in a framework. So the very first thing I do in the book is, is I set up the context in a framework, think about a court of law. In a court of law, you have a certain witnesses, you have a certain structure, and even the evidence have to be presented in a certain way. So I set up the structure as a court of law, and then I bring the evidence in a way that uh, a Jewish person can understand it. A Jewish person can uh, understand that it's a Jewish case. The case of Mashiach, the case of the kosher pig is, is truly, a, truly a Jewish case with the Jewish witnesses. What do I mean by that? If I said to you, you have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, and I'm going to say, so where? Well, says who? And I quote you a bunch of theologians. He says, well, uh, I have a problem because I don't believe in those theologians. In the case of the kosher pig, I bring up voices, Jewish voices, that speak about the portrait of the Messiah. So I don't uh, try to convince people of something that the rabbis not have already said themselves. Mm -hmm. so, so say, I say, I believe, I feel, I say, they say, they believe, they feel. It's a unique case because it's a Jewish court law and a Jewish case uh, 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 for the Jewish Messiah. I, I know you're tired, I had a long day for you, but uh, your background, how did, how did you come to the Messiah? <laughs> you don't have to go into a long explanation. Yeah, the, the bottom but, line is that, you know, Book of Yohanan, those who, 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 if you believe Moses, you're also going to believe me, okay? For me, I was raised up in Judaism, really, in real Judaism, all my life, in Israel, 
I don't know anything about Christianity. I have no connection to Christianity, even up to this day today. I don't. I'm a Jewish person raised in this, in a traditional Sephardic home. And I thank the rabbis. You want to know who I thank to? To the words of Moses and the prophets, but I thank the rabbis. I was challenged to look deeply and I spent the majority of my life after rise up in Judaism, uh, looking specifically uh, in what the, 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 the book of Tanya in its essence says, the essence of all creation is Mashiach. Sanhedrin 99 says all the prophets prophesied for the days of the Mashiach. So the essence is Mashiach. So when I, I put the lens on to look for Mashiach, through not just the scripture, through rabbinical writing, uh, it appears, and it got to the point that it became, uh, it took more uh, faith not to believe mm. than to believe. That's in essence, in a, in a nutshell.